Welcome back for Rocky Nation. This is vlog 14, part 3, Jury Finds Larry Harris Guilty of Armed Robbery. I want you to take note that this January 27th, 1994 article by Bob Wigginton, published in the Quincy Herald Whig newspaper, takes on a different tone. My dad and I have suspicions that somebody told Bob Wigginton to not write what he was observing in the courtroom and to write the narrative that he was being that he was told to write. Jury finds Larry Harris guilty of armed robbery. Harris could get up to 120 years in prison for robbing Kelly's Tavern and the Silver Dollar Tavern while his accomplice faces no more than 15 years. The man who robbed two local taverns at gunpoint in late 1992 faces up to 120 years in prison after an Adams County jury found him guilty Wednesday. The jury of nine women and three men deliberated about four and a half hours before returning the verdict against Larry G. Harris, now 35, of 821 South 11th. Harris's accomplice in the armed robberies of Kelly's Tavern in the Silver Dollar Tavern, Kent P. Humphrey, 31, of 1439 Cherry, testified against Harris in exchange for a prison sentence of no more than 15 years in prison. Notice how Bob's writing has changed. Harris faces up to 60 years on each of two counts of armed robbery, a Class X felony, because of a previous conviction for armed violence. Harris will be sentenced March 2nd. Humphrey, who insisted his role involved only taking money, awaits a March 1st jail sentencing in the Adams County Jail. Harris and Humphrey, who also has a history of violence, that's Humphrey, who has a history of violence, Met at Can-Am Industries, now Titan Wheel, several years ago, Humphrey said the two of them worked in the same departments. Neither Harris nor Humphrey were employed at Titan Wheel when they robbed ta the taverns. Adams County State's Attorney Scott Walden and Defense Attorney Jonathan Barnard gave closing arguments Wednesday morning. Walden said his key witness probably tried to, quote, minimize end quote, his role in the robberies, but that didn't affect Harris's involvement or guilt. Humphrey testified that Harris was the only one with the gun in the robberies, but the silver dollar bartender said both men had guns. Humphrey also testified that he did not see Harris club a cleaning man over the head when the two ambushed him outside Kelly's tavern. The man testified that both robbers attacked him. Other than conflicting testimony, the case had its share of unusual twists. Walden and Assistant State's Attorney Terry Anastas were thrown a curve Tuesday when Harris's 16-year-old son took the stand and testified. They expected him to say he did not remember giving police a statement last September that prosecutors say implicated his father. Instead, the son responded, no. When he was asked about parts of the statement, prompting Walden to ask for and receive permission to treat the youth as a hostile witness, even though he called him to the stand. When the son resumed testimony, he limited his responses to, I don't remember, but admitted signing the statement. In another unusual twist, Circuit Judge Dennis Cashman ordered the state to reveal Harris's unemployment benefits during the time of the robberies. Barnard wanted to show that Harris did have an income about $1,116 a month at the time of the robberies. State law forbids using unemployment records in court cases, but Cashman said the statute was inflexible and blamed lawmakers for, quote, interfering with the interests of justice by passing a law without exceptions, end quote. Cashman said the statute may be appropriate for civil court, where hiding assets sometimes happens, but, quote, here we're dealing with a defendant who's charged with two Class X felonies. If anyone is to be criticized, it'll be me, Cashman told a department supervisor, that it would be the Department of Labor, before forcing him to disclose Harris's unemployment records. The whole motive 
that the prosecution presented for my father and Kit Humphrey robbing these two places was that my dad was poor. But here, Barnard proved that my dad had an income. From 1992, $1,000 a month was still pretty good money, and we owned our own house, so we were paying a mortgage, and we uh, had a duplex. We were renting out the other side, and my dad was starting a business. Um, so we definitely had income and I was living with my dad during this time. That's how I remember all this. So it's interesting that when they started asking my brother things from his statement, like, did you see the money your dad stole? Did your dad show you the pistol? Things of that nature. His answers were no. And I don't recall that being true and things like that.